Welcome back. She is a multi-talented, celebrated veteran performer, author, producer, and activist who first shot to fame back in the 60s playing an aspiring actress in Manhattan in the classic TV series, That Girl. He's an actor who's best known for his work on the big screen in films like Diner, Police Academy, and Three Men and a Baby. I'm speaking, of course, of Marlo Thomas and Steve Gutenberg. And while these two performers may be best known for their work on the big and small screens, they are no strangers to the stage. Currently, they are both appearing on Broadway in Relatively Speaking, an evening of three one-act comedies by Ethan Cohn, Elaine May, and Woody Allen. I recently got the chance to chat with Ms. Thomas, who's starring in the Elaine May piece called George is Dead, and Mr. Gutenberg, who's in Woody Allen's Honeymoon Motel. Remember your little rooms in our house? Your pretty little blue and white rooms in the back of the kitchen? Yes. Actually, it was one little blue and white room with a screen for my brother. Yes, so pretty. Now, Tom, Tom is your husband, right? Not your brother. No, Tom was my husband. Dolph is my brother. Michael is who I'm married to now. Oh, so not Tom. No. I have to remember that. Not Tom, not Tom, not Tom. I can't help it, I fell in love. Yeah. Where is the blushy bride? Inside, slipping into a hot satin fabric with great erotic potential. We're finally gonna consummate something that began one balmy June night on Paul's sailboat in the moonlight when my hand accidentally brushed against her full cleavage. Your hand brushed against her breast? That's where I put it. <laughs> Marlo Thomas, Steve Gutenberg, welcome to On Stage. What a thrill to have you in. Thanks. And welcome back to Broadway for both of you. Thank you. Um, now, you two are obviously very high-profile veterans of show business who are most famous for your work in other mediums. Not that you don't do theater, but your, your greatest fame is in other mediums. Um, Marlo, your last time on Broadway was in 1994 in the Shadow Box. Uh -huh. Steve, you made your Broadway debut in Prelude to a Kiss in 91, but you haven't come back to Broadway since for either one of you. What about your roles in, in the one act in Relatively Speaking made you want to come back to Broadway? Well, why don't I start with you? And, and well, I've been doing a lot of regional theater. I did Arthur Lawrence's last play right. two years ago, which was fabulous to work with him. And um, I did a national tour of Six Degrees. So I've been doing theater, but I haven't, didn't find anything new. You know, this was a new play uh, that I could be in, and I loved it. I love this character, and I love Elaine May. And something about her, her dialogue, it just fits me. You know? Okay, and what about you, Steve, and, and well, Woody Allen's saying, Honeymoon Motel? I'm in Honeymoon Motel. And Marlo's in a play called George is Dead. Right. And you've got to see her in it, because <laughs> when you talk about your regional theater and you see all the tools that Marlo brings to the show. And we've talked about this, and Marlo's given me some great tips on craft. But when you see all the preparation that she does, and when you see how she plays this role night after night, and gets from the audience what she needs, and gives them what they need, you see all this preparation from all the regional theater. You see all that hard work. Right. And that's just... Something it's I just quite was a thinking layer about. Of performance and, yeah, thank yeah, you, and it's very, it's well, it's That's so nice of you. Thank you. That, well, my pleasure. For me, I um, I uh, I'm a sort of a working stiff. I like to work, um, and I was lucky enough. A buddy of mine, Woody Harrelson, did a show in Minneapolis. I did that show, and then uh, mm -hmm. someone said Woody Allen's doing a play, so I just said yes. <laughs> yeah, Woody yes, Allen was enough. Uh, yes. And Marla, let me ask you about Doreen. Yes. She is this wealthy socialite who has just learned, the, the, the first line of, of the play is George is dead. Her right. husband George has just been killed in a skiing accident. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's, she's not just a ditz though, there's a lot of layers here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about getting into her skin and what you've learned along the way with her. Well, I think the whole secret to Doreen and, and why people in the audience like her is they, they see themselves in her. She's running from bad news. From the, very, the moment she says George is dead, she's in a state of panic. She's running from that news, and she runs to the only person she knows that might take her in, and that's her nanny's daughter. It's just an amazing, when you think about somebody that wealthy mm -hmm. and that connected, but the only real connection she feels is with somebody from her childhood. Mm -hmm. So 
so that idea of running from the from the grief and, uh, and in many ways what this play is about is are the stages of grief right. she starts mm -hmm. with complete denial yeah. and she uh -huh. ends with acceptance and that's a wonderful thing to be able to play as an actor to really take a, a full journey like that mm -hmm. from denial to acceptance and we've all had to do it mm -hmm. in our lives and and so I think that's and you know if you put that through the mind of Elaine May it's mm -hmm. funny right. she, you know she shows us the funny side of it but there's no no denying that that's what's there and many people say how touching the play is even though they're laughing all the time and what about we were talking about uh, this a little bit before we went on air that uh, you have this blonde wig yes how that how does that help you when you put that wig uh, on? it's enormous you know Al Pacino always talks about the fact that shoes help him uh -huh. well nothing helps you more than being a brunette and going to a blonde uh -huh. now Steve you are playing Jerry Spector in Woody Allen's honeymoon motel you are the father of the groom at a wedding who has, I, I won't reveal it, but you have an unusual relationship <laughs> with the bride. Um, what's it like working with Woody Allen? Well, you, you both have writers who are obviously high profile writers, also known as directors. Um, but you have, you also have another director, John Turturro, who is, is the director. What's it like, um, you know, that balance in the rehearsal? I found it one of the most creative experiences I've ever had. And uh, I've been around for a while. Um, and I learned so much because John Turturro is brilliant in his own way and Woody is just a master of so many things and when you blend those two guys and you got a great cast to work with I find myself just learning things every day even now when I'm on stage I'm just learning and I think the greatest thing I came away from was that everything is liquid if something doesn't work let's change it so a great writer like Woody, if a line doesn't work, he's going to change it. I think talented people aren't afraid that they're going to run out of ideas. Uh -huh. uh, uh, less talented people think well, you have to say it that way, yeah. or it has to be that way because I don't have another way. Right. But right. a very talented person like Woody, Elaine May, and uh -huh. Ethan Cohen, they all know that there's a million ways. We're almost out of time, but I want to ask you one last thing about, here we have an evening of, of three one-act comedies. I want to ask you about the nature of comedy itself. And Marla, you, last year you um, came out with a book called Growing Up Laughing. It's a combination memoir of, of you and, and your dad, as well as you interview um, mm -hmm. some uh, current um, comedians. And um, in, uh, I think it was part through an interview you had done with Jerry Seinfeld, where he was bringing up the notion of comedy as sport, not art. In that you're, you're scoring laughs, it's it's. So he was he, saying that 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 the uh, that, that comedy belongs on the sports pages, right, Because right. it's all about the score, right? That's in other what words, I mean. When he's it's getting not, a laugh, right? He, when he's getting a laugh, he's like a guy who's playing for the Yankees. You either hit the ball or you didn't hit the ball, right? So it, you well, do do you feel that way? Like when you're on no, stage, I, I, well, or? I'm not a comedian. I'm not, I'm not a stand-up comedian, so I'm not judging my performance by. The laugh, so. and I'm not totally responsible because every laugh belongs to all you the actors. You think that really only applies to stand-up? I think it does apply to stand-up. I think what's mm -hmm. great about comedy is surprise. And I think what makes our plays, all of our plays, work is that these writers are very good at surprising the audience. What I think is exciting about the night of, of uh, Relatively Speaking is that you really are seeing three masters of comedy mm -hmm. show you three different styles of comedy. Mm -hmm. right. That's very exciting, yeah. you know, when you, when you see them, because they're completely different. It's wildly like different. Yeah. It you is. Know, you have a right. certain well, course, another course, and another right, course. Right. Yeah. And they're all different, and they're very filling. Yes. Very well, filling. unfortunately, we're out of time, <laughs> but you can go catch this filling dinner of comedy <laughs> at the Brooks Atkinson Theater, relatively speaking. So, Marlo Thomas, Steve Gutenberg, thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Okay, it is time for a short break. Coming up when we return, reviews of Kim Cattrall and...